Starting in verse 11, it says, There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Yeah. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. We pray that you would open our hearts and minds. Lord, that you would teach us the things that you would have for us to know, that we would have your wisdom and understanding in your scripture. Lord, we know that uh, this is your word, and Lord, that it will not return void. But Lord, it will accomplish in our lives what you have set it out to accomplish. Lord, to change us, to mold us, to make us more to what you want us to be. Lord, we just pray that you would help us tonight to follow in your word. Lord, that you would speak to us through your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you would use me as your mouthpiece to preach your message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There is a generation. And I believe the things that it's talking about here is talking about pride. Mm -hmm. A generation that curse their father and do not bless their mother. They're pure in their own eyes, but yet they're not washed from their filthiness. The generation that has lofty eyes and their eyelids are lifted up, whose teeth are as swords and jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor and the needy from among men. And this is talking about pride. And uh, reading this just off the top, uh, as I was studying it, I thought it was talking about teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because teenagers, you know, they think they know it all and, and uh, they don't listen to their father, they don't bless their mother. Uh, but it's not just teenagers anymore. There's a whole generation of people that are coming up and it gets worse and worse as the, as the years go by that they are puffed up in their pride. They don't see that they have a need for the Lord Jesus Christ because they don't see that they are wrong. Yeah. Their eyes are lofty. They're pure in their own eyes. They have justified themselves. And pride is one of the worst cancers of the world that we see. It spreads like a cancer. And it kills like a cancer. And it's not a cancer of the body physically, but it is of the soul. Yeah. Look at Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, in the forward mouth do I hate. God hates pride, amen? Yeah. Arrogancy and pride are hand in hand, and the evil way. Pride always leads towards the evil way. Pride always leads people astray. Pride always leads people to their own devices and not the way of God. Yeah. And that is why the Lord hates it. And if we fear the Lord, we will hate evil. Yeah. Amen? That fear of the Lord, that reverence that we should have of God should lead us to humility and not to pride. Should you lead us to the point of humbling ourselves unto God and not lifting ourselves up, yeah. but lifting Him up. Amen? As John the Baptist said, I must decrease and He must increase. Amen. Not that I increase, but that He increases. Yeah. Amen? Jesus said, if any man come unto me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow Amen. me. Yeah. We are to uh, be abased as far as this world is concerned. Not to be of any reputation as Christ was of no reputation. Became a servant. Yeah. And became obedient to the death of the cross. Amen. We need to become obedient to the hand of God. Yeah. And not to puff ourselves up. Because pride. The Lord hates pride. 
Look at Job chapter 35. Job chapter 35, starting in verse 9, it says, By reason of the multitude of oppressions, Yes, I'm in the right place. Job 35, starting in verse 9, it says, By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. But none saith, Where is God, my Maker? Who giveth songs in the night. Who teacheth us more than the beast of the earth. And maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven. There they cry. But none give in, giveth answer because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not hear vanity. Neither will the Almighty regard it. Although they, thou sayest thou shalt not see him. Yet judgment is before him. Therefore, trust thou in Him. Yeah. We find that it's because of the pride of man, of evil men, as it says here, that God will not hear their cry. <coughs> because they haven't humbled themselves under God. They haven't seen and become guilty before God. Yeah. As it tells us in Romans, that God gave the commandments, not... To, to be justified, but that all the world would become guilty before God. Yeah. Yeah. And when men uh, find themselves oppressed, when men find themselves uh, in trouble, they call and they cry out, but none answer. God does not answer because they cry out only to be saved, but they have never humbled themselves. Yeah. And it's because of pride. Many will come to Jesus in that last day and say, Lord, Lord, haven't we done all these wonderful works in thy name? And he shall say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Yeah. Why? It's not because they did not call upon his name. It's because they never humbled themselves and they were built up on their own pride. Yeah. And he never heard them. Look at Psalms chapter 10. Psalm chapter 10 and verses 4 through 7 it says, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved. For I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Man, Man by pride, is fooled by the devil to think that they will never be moved, that no one can touch them, that they are stronger than God, to think that they don't even need God, that God is not at all in their thoughts. It's like alcohol, you know? It's like drugs. You get someone on alcohol and guess what? They call it what? Liquid courage? You got to get some liquid courage? Because they think that they're invincible. Pride is a cancer. Pride is what is bringing many people down to the depths of because they will not turn from their wicked ways. And they will not turn unto God who can save them because of pride. Yeah. Pride leads many people down to the devil's head every day. Look with me to Psalms chapter 73. Psalms chapter 73 and starting in verse 6. He says, Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain, 
Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart to wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How does God know? And is there no knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I therein. Yeah. Surely thou didst set them in slip, slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. We find where pride leads many people. Right. Down to destruction. <laughs> pride, they say that they don't need anything. And the Bible says that they're, they're the rich in the earth. That they run <laughs> And there's many people that, that think they have it all figured out. They think that they're, they're, you know, able to take care of their own problems and they don't need a God. In fact, they think that people who believe and trust in God are weak-minded. And yet all that they have in their pride is bringing them down to destruction. Yeah. Look at Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16 in verses 18 and 19 says starting in verse 18 pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Amen. Amen. The Pride goeth before destruction. There is only one way that pride leads to, and that is destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. Not only are they destroying themselves, but everyone that is around them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's better to be humble and take part with the lowly than it is to divide the spoil with the proud. Because their way is a path of destruction. And they take everyone with them mm -hmm. that goes their way. Yeah. Look at Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. It might seem right to the world. In fact, they teach it to our kids in the schools. They teach them pride, to, to, to have pride. They teach the kids arrogancy in the schools. How to be arrogant. How to think that they're better than everyone else. To stand out. That's not what Jesus did, our great example. Amen. He was the King of Heaven. Everything was His. Yeah. And is His. <laughs> not just was, is. His. And yet He gave it all up to come. To a world born in a manger. I mean, we're talking about the King of Ages, the Lord of Lords, <laughs> born in a barn, born in a bunch of hay. The Bible said he never had a pillow to lay his head on. 
He gave it all up. What? For you and I? That's the example. Amen? Yeah. Is not to be ambitious in this world, to be a, but to be ambitious in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? To have a desire to see God work in this life. Amen? In our lives and in the lives of others. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. Turn away from the wicked generation. Don't take part with them. And hide pride from your eyes. Don't become proudful. Don't become where you think that you're entitled to everything. Amen. Yeah. We know what we're entitled to. In Christ, we have eternal life. Yeah. In Christ, we have all blessings. With God, all things are possible. Yeah. But in this world, this world is leading people down the wrong path. Look at Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33, starting in verse 15, it says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. So that life abhors bread and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand to show unto to man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Yeah. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his face with joy. For he will render unto man his righteousness. Yeah. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Yeah. Amen. Lo, all these things worketh God oftentimes with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light, of the living. Yeah. To wake them up. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, pride has them blinded to the things that are true. And God tries to wake them up. And Brother Clifford preached on this once about the dreams that God uses to, to hide pride from man. Yeah. The dreams that, that we have where we're trying to run and, and we can't run fast enough. Or, or uh, you know, people have dreams where uh, they're out in public and they're naked and they can't find any clothes and they're trying to hide themselves. Just as Adam and Eve hid themselves in the garden because of their sin. Yeah. Or the dreams where someone's trying to fly and they keep falling. All these dreams God puts in the minds of men to show them that we are not what we think we are. Yeah. And we don't have the control that we think we have. That is an illusion. It's an illusion of pride. To think that we have any control over this life. Yeah. We have none. That is pride. To think that you can handle your problems by yourself. That yeah. is pride. Yeah. To think that you can do the things that uh, need to be done and handle the problems of others is pride. Yeah. If you can't handle your own problems, how are you going to handle the problems of others? Yeah. You can't. Yeah. He says the man on his bed, 
he says he is chastened with pain and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. You know what? You know why God lets us get old? <laughs> you don't know how many times as, a, as cutting a hair as a barber that men say, man, the older I get, the more hair I get in my ears and my eyebrows and lose it on top of my head. And you know what I tell them? That's God trying to hide pride from me. Yeah. Showing them, you know what? When you were young, you thought you had the world by the tail, but guess what? You're not as much as what you thought you were. Amen. Amen. God lets us get old so we can see, you know what? One, at one time, we thought we could whip the world. We thought we could handle everything that came our way, but we realized, guess what? We're not really that much at all. Yeah. We're really not as strong as what we thought we were. God is trying to hide pride from man. Yeah. The pain, the sickness, all that stuff to show man, listen, life is frail and you have no control over it yeah. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Give up and let God, amen? Yeah. Give up and let Jesus take over. Yeah. Look at 1 John chapter 2. goes on, though, I could stay there for quite a while talking about someone that will tell them. Listen, when God's hiding pride from someone, that's a great time to tell, talk to them about yeah. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. I found a ransom. Amen. 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 So that they might say, you know what, I've gone my own way and it profited me not. Amen. And turn unto the Lord. Amen. Look at 1 John chapter 2. You know what that is? That's becoming humble and guilty before God. Amen. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Yeah. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We need to know the truth. Amen. Yeah. Though man stands hand in hand against God, they will not succeed. Mm -hmm. Though this world come together and build a place on this earth, a utopia, and try to keep themselves alive for as long as what they think they can, it's not going to prosper. Right. They tried it back in the Old Testament in the Tower of Babel. To have one nation, one language, and one religion. And God, He dispersed them. <laughs> Did He not? Yes. Yeah, right. They will not prosper standing against God. Yeah. Because the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the fallen, but is of the world. That's right. And this world is going to pass away. And everything in it, the lust thereof. But it's he that doeth the will of God that's going to abide forever. Amen. Amen. That is the truth. You know, when you understand, you know, I, when you're young and you look at all these people, and, and, you know, some, especially young men, look up at athletes, and, and, and the girls look up to singers or. or movie stars or whatever, and you think, man, it would be such a glorious life to be like them. It'd be such a wonderful life if I had their life. You know what? The older you get, the more you see that their life isn't so great. Yeah. Because there is an end. We need to re remember in our lives that there is an end. There is a day of reckoning. Yeah. He 
that do the will of God abideth forever. Look at Psalms chapter 31. I'm going to read Psalms 31, verses 19 to 24, it says, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for He has showed me His marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee. O love the Lord, all ye His saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful. For the Lord preserveth the faithful. And plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Amen. You see, the opposite of pride is humility. But humility brings us to the place of total dependence upon God. Amen. Total dependence upon God. And that's is what is going to preserve us. Amen. Because our own power, our own devices will not preserve us. But God will. Amen. As He says, for the Lord preserveth the faithful. Amen. And the proud doer, He's going to be rewarded for His deeds one day. He might seem like He has it all together right now. But one day, his pride is going to lead him to destruction. But be of good courage. Amen? Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Courage doesn't mean that you're not afraid. Courage doesn't mean that you have no uh, qualms. But being of good courage is knowing that God is greater than all that. Amen? Yeah. Courage is saying, you know what? Even in the shadow of the valley of death, I can fear no evil. Yeah. For thou art with me. Amen. Not because I'm strong. Not because I'm great. But because thou art with me. Amen. Amen. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Amen. Don't let pride set in. Stay humble, amen? And trust and hope in the Lord. Let's stand. Yeah. Lord, we thank you tonight for the word that was preached. Lord, we pray that you'd help us not to be of that generation of pride. But Lord, help us to fear you and reverence you in our lives. Lord, help us to place our trust in our needs, trust in the problems of life and put them all into your hands, Lord, to trust all those things into your hands. Lord, that as we cast our care upon you, Lord, we know that you care for us. And as your word says, that he that doeth your will shall abide forever. Not because of our own power, but because of your promise, of your word. Lord, help us stand upon those promises. For that is our strength. Lord, knowing that you cannot lie and that you do not change. Lord, that what you have promised, you will keep. And what we commit unto you, you will keep unto that day. Lord, we thank you for all these things.